Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today we shall discuss infectious disease epidemiology. So whenever we are studying infectious diseases or uh, dealing with infectious disease patients, uh, we shall come across a lot of terminologies like epidemic, endemic, pandemic, then host, uh, infection, infestation, communicable disease, etc. So we need to understand what these terminologies mean. So in today's discussion or today's video, we shall learn these individual definitions and try to understand what they actually mean. Starting with infection. So the entry and development or multiplication of an infectious agent in an organism including the body of a man or animals so whenever an infectious agent that can be a bacteria or virus fungus parasite anything when it enters and develops or multiplies in the body of a human being or animal it is known as infection there are different levels of infection like colonization subclinical or inapparate infection latent infection and then manifest or clinical infection. Next is contamination, which we often confuse with infection, but they are not the same thing. Contamination is the presence of an infectious agent on the body surface, also on or in clothes, bedding, toys, surgical instruments or dressings or other inanimate articles or substances including water, milk or food. So as you can see, in contamination, it can be present the organism can be present or the infectious agent can be present on the body surface also on our clothes or bedding or even water milk food that we consume so this is contamination there is no multiplication or uh, development of the infectious agent there is another term that is uh, pollution uh, which is basically different from contamination pollution is the presence of an offensive but not necessarily an infectious matter in the environment so if in the environment uh, something is present which seems offensive but which is not necessarily any infectious matter so you can say plastic or garbage or anything uh, they may not be infectious but they are offensive so that is what known as pollution next is infestation for persons and animals, the lodgement, development and reproduction of arthropods on the surface of the body or in the clothing, for example, lice, mite, etc. So when these arthropods, they uh, lodge or that means they stay, they develop and reproduce on the surface of the body, then it is known as infestation, but they can also get inside our body, for example, uh, gut infestation can occur, for example, in case of ascariasis. So this is known as infestation and this is mostly uh, for the arthropods uh, which occurs on the surface of her body. Next is host. So who is a host? Any person or living animal including birds and arthropods that affords sustenance or lodgement to an infectious agent under natural condition. So in natural condition, uh, human being or animal including birds and arthropods can allow the lodgement or sustenance of infectious agent and that is, uh, that is when the person or the animal will be uh, called a host for that infectious agent. So it can be an obligate host. Uh, that means the only host there is no other species for example man in measles or typhoid fever it can be a transport host 
the a carrier in which the organism remains alive but does not undergo development so the host actually carries the organism so the organism needs this host for survival but the organism does not undergo any development so it does not mature uh, in the host primary or definitive host is uh, in which the parasite attains maturity or passes its sexual stage for example malarial parasite in the mosquito uh, mosquito is the primary or definitive host because the parasites undergo sexual stage in the mosquito on the other hand secondary or intermediate host is in which the parasite is in asexual or larval stage so uh, again in human being the malarial parasite uh, only multiplies in number and develops but it does not undergo any sexual stage so that is why human being are secondary or intermediate host for malarial parasite infectious disease occurs due to infection so infection can occur in any person but if the immunity in that person is strong then it will prevent the organism or the infectious agent from causing the disease so infectious disease may not even occur even after infection so if it occurs it is known as infectious disease it can be contagious or non contagious all infectious diseases and infestations are communicable disease so what is infestations what is communicable disease we shall learn next contagious disease is a disease that is transmitted through contact for example scabies trachoma std or sexually transmitted diseases and leprosy so these diseases occur through contact communicable disease is an illness due to a specific infectious agent or its toxic products that arises through transmission of that agent or its products from an infected person animal or reservoir to a susceptible host either directly or indirectly through an intermediate plant or animal host vector or the inanimate environment so you can say if an infectious agent or its toxic product is transmitted from a person or an animal or even environment to another person or animal uh, then it is called a communicable disease because the infection is being communicated from uh, one person or a infected person or animal or environment to another susceptible person or animal next we shall learn few definitions which are related and also very close to each other but the meaning of these definitions are different for for example the first one is endemic so endemic uh, was derived from the uh, two words en means in and demos mean people it refers to the constant presence of a disease or infectious agent within a given geographical area or population group without importation from outside it may also refer to the usual or expected frequency of disease within such area or population group so if in a given geographical area and or in a given group of people a disease is always present uh, that means we are always getting some cases of that disease and that is expected for that uh, geographical area or the population then we can say the disease is endemic in that area or in that population okay so this is expected so the number of cases we are getting is of expected frequency endemic can be hyperendemic where the disease is constantly present at high incidence and or prevalence rate and affects all age groups equally so the disease is present but the incidence or the prevalence is quite high and it affects all age group but this is expected we are getting this every year or maybe every season so that is expected so this is known as hyperendemic what is holoendemic holoendemic is when the infection occurs at very early age and lot of uh, child population uh, or you can say children are affected so there are a lot of cases in the child population and uh, as as the age group grows you will see that the older population are less affected than the Uh, child population uh, this is known as hollow endemic for example malaria which occurs very uh, less commonly among uh, 
uh, older population but more common among younger generations uh, for example uh, it is very common among people uh, around 20 to 30 year or 30 to 40 year age group because they go outside because of their occupation and they're exposed to the environment very commonly unlike the older population who uh, stay at home they are not exposed to the environment and there are many other diseases which is very common uh, in child population so this is known as hollow endemic next is epidemic so again this is another word derived from two words epi which means upon and demos mean people so the occurrence in a community or region of cases of an illness specific health related behavior or other health related events clearly in excess of normal expectancy so again uh, in endemic we learned that the number of cases are of uh, expected frequency but here the number of cases you are getting uh, because of any illness or uh, health related behavior or events the numbers are uh, clearly in excess of normal expectancy that means it is way above the uh, level of normal expectation in that case it is known as epidemic now let me tell you something here there is another term which is uh, called outbreak uh, sometimes we use outbreak and epidemic interchangeably but they are actually not the same thing outbreak means number of cases above the normal expectancy but not as high as uh, it is in case of epidemic in epidemic the number of cases are very high and way above the normal expectancy but in outbreak uh, the number of cases are above normal expectancy but it is not ridiculously high uh, another thing is if in, a, in any given population there is not a single case of any particular disease for a long period of time and then one case appear then it will be called an outbreak it is not an epidemic as such so this is an outbreak because we have only one case in the given population where the disease was not pre uh, present earlier so as you can see it was not endemic at all and the number of cases here is only just above the level of endemic so this is outbreak not epidemic anyway the number of cases indicating the presence of an epidemic varies according to certain uh, criteria for example the agent uh, so what kind of agent is causing the disease whether that is very infective uh, what is the secondary attack rate etc etc everything depends on the uh, type of agent size and type of population exposed uh, especially uh, previous experience and lack of exposure to the disease for example if the people in the population they were vaccinated or they had the natural infection in earlier age group which provides a long period of immunity in both cases there will be less number of cases in the given population so the type and size of the population also their exposure to the disease either naturally or by vaccine uh, that will also uh, lead to or uh, that will also influence the number of cases in the given population also the time and place of occurrence so all these things uh, will indicate the presence of ep epidemic and how many cases will occur uh, they all depend on these factors next is sporadic sporadic means scattered about so cases occur irregularly haphazardly from time to time and generally infrequently uh, that means these cases are not regular or not frequent so you cannot call them uh, endemic because you are not expecting them so suddenly one case appeared in a given place another case may appear after a long period of time in a completely different geographical place so this can occur the cases are so few and separated widely in space uh, that means uh, in distance and time that they show little or no connection with each other nor a recognizable common source of infection so if you get two cases of a same disease at two different geographical areas which are very far from each other also the timing of the cases are not simultaneous so maybe one case appeared today another case appeared uh, three or four months after that so you cannot actually make any connection between these two cases and you cannot find out a source from which these two person or these two cases uh, got their infection from 
For example, tetanus, herpes zoster, meningococcal, meningitis, etc. can be sporadic diseases. Another term, pandemic, which is very relevant in current situation for uh, over last two years. Uh, an epidemic occurring over a very wide area, crossing international boundaries and usually affecting large number of people. So, this is basically epidemic uh, because the number of cases is way above the expected frequency. But this is actually even bigger than epidemic because the disease is spread over a wide area and it is also crossing international boundaries that means uh, maybe or adjacent countries are being affected or even multiple continents are being affected the agent to cause pandemic must be able to infect human to cause disease in human and to spread easily from human to human and examples are influenza cholera covid-19 etc what is exotic disease disease which are imported in a country in which they are not otherwise occur they do not otherwise occur so we are talking about a disease which is <coughs> as such not present in the country but if the disease is introduced in that country from some other country where it is present then it will be an exotic disease for the country where it has been introduced for example yellow fever does not exist in india there has not been a single case which was reported so far in india so if yellow fever is introduced from some other country to our country then it will be an exotic disease for our country next is zoonosis an infection or infectious disease transmissible under natural condition from vertebrate animal to man so the diseases or the infectious agent is coming from the vertebrate animals this can be enzootic or epizootic which uh, we shall uh, discuss next the example of zoonosis are rabies plague bovine tuberculosis anthrax brucellosis salmonellosis epidemic typhus hydatidosis cashner forest disease or kfd monkeypox lisa fever etc so this uh, disease or infection or the infectious agent is present in the animal population but somehow we the human being are getting the infection from the animals and when i say animal i mean vertebrate animals and from them we are getting the infection and the disease so this is known as zoonosis so what is enzootic en means endemic and zoo means among the animal population so endemic occurring in animals for example anthrax rabies brucellosis bovine tuberculosis epidemic typhus and tick typhus so they are always present in the animal population so that is why endemic epizootic is an outbreak or epidemic of disease in the animal population and it often implies that it can also affect the human population for example anthrax rabies brucellosis influenza rift valley fever q fever japanese encephalitis equine encephalitis etc apornithic ornithic means bird and ape means epidemic so an outbreak of epidemic of disease in the bird population is known as apornithic next is nosocomial infection nosocomial infection is also known as hospital acquired infection an infection originating in a patient while in hospital or other healthcare facility so when a person gets admitted in a hospital because of any reason during his stay or stay in the hospital if he contracts any disease or infection then it is known as nosocomial infection it was not present or incubating at the time of admission or the residual of an infection occurred during previous admission so when the patient was admitted he was already not suffering from the disease or he was not in the incubation period of the disease that actually confirms that he got the infection after the admission and that then it will be called a nosocomial infection it also includes infection acquired in the hospital but appearing after discharge so what happens the person gets infected during hospital but the disease develops after he was discharged that means he he was in incubation period at the time of discharge when he goes back home after few days he will develop the disease 
but since the infection occurred during his stay in the hospital so it will also be considered as nosocomial infection examples can be surgical infection very common urinary tract infection because of catheterization hepatitis b because of blood transfusion or other uh, intravenous procedures opportunistic infection infections with organisms that are normally innocuous that means they are commensals in the human body they stay in our body but they do not cause disease but become pathogenic when the body's immunological defense are compromised as in aids so hiv infection or aids we know there is a suppression of the immunity or if the person uh, is undergoing any immunosuppressive therapy maybe the person will be uh, undergoing uh, organ transplantation so for that he has to be put on immunosuppressive therapy maybe he is on cancer chemotherapy so because of any reason because of, uh, if his immunity level is compromised then the organisms which were present in his body which were not causing disease earlier now they will reactivate and become pathogenic and they will cause the opportunistic infection what is iatrogenic disease it refers to adverse effects of preventive diagnostic therapeutic surgical and other medical biotechnical cosmetic sanitary and public health products services procedures interventions or policies so we are trying to do something good to the person suffering from a disease all right maybe we are trying to diagnose so any uh, diagnostic intervention was done any preventive intervention like vaccine was given therapeutic surgical so any surgery was done or any medication was done so all these things which were done for the benefit of the patient maybe uh, it inadvertently lead to another disease this will be known as uh, iatrogenic disease for example reaction to immunizing agents when vaccines are given certain adverse event following the immunization can occur childhood leukemia due to prenatal x-ray hepatitis b following blood transfusion etc so as you can see some of the procedures were done uh, for the benefit of the person or for any reason medical reason but it affected uh, the person later on two terminologies eradication and elimination are often confused between this is very important that we understand the difference between elimination and eradication because they are not the same thing eradication is the termination of all transmission of the infection by extermination of the infectious agent through surveillance and containment that means if the infectious agent is not present anywhere in the whole world or we can say the infectious agent has been exterminated from the whole world that will ensure that there is no transmission of the infection anywhere in the world and in such situation we can say the disease has been eradicated from the whole world this is a all or none phenomena because it will either occur in the whole world or it will not occur if the infection is present in any corner of the whole world that means that we have not eradicated the disease till date there is only one disease that has been eradicated and it is smallpox elimination the term is sometimes used to describe eradication of a disease from a large geographical region or political jurisdiction now i do not like to use the term eradication to describe elimination because of course eradication is a bigger thing it is a global thing let us uh, simplify this this thing suppose we have exterminated the infectious agent from a large geographical area that means uh, it has been exterminated from a country or maybe a continent because of that there will not be any transmission of the infection in that geographical area in such situation we can say we have eliminated from eliminated the disease from that area but since the infectious agent may be present in some other country or other continent that means it has not been eradicated yet but there are certain diseases like measles diphtheria polio guinea worm which are amenable to eradication that means they are possible to be eradicated 
we have to plan our healthcare system accordingly polio uh, most of the countries in the whole world have uh, eliminated polio but there are still certain countries where the vaccine virus is being reported maybe uh, wild polio virus are also being reported so uh, that is why we have not still eradicated polio measles we are still reporting measles cases in india but this is very much possible to be eradicated because there are certain points in favor of measles eradication the disease do not have any carrier state there is only cases also there is uh, always some clinical features uh, subclinical cases do not occur there is no uh, other animal reservoirs effective vaccines are available against measles so all these points are in favor of eradication of measles so these diseases can be or may be uh, eradicated in future so with this we conclude today's session we have learned so many terminologies in context of a infectious disease epidemiology i hope uh, it was beneficial to you if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video